Uh, welcome to the last lecture in this series, which is going to be uh, assignment read through. So, so the only purpose of this is I'm just going to highlight some of the common errors that people make. Um, hopefully there's, there's certain items that might not be 100% clear, so hopefully I'll clarify that with this lecture. And then if after that you've still got queries, then you can refer to the platform and then I can try and answer those queries to the best of my abilities there. Right, so let's get straight into it. I'm going to share the assignment with you guys. You'll see that on the screen now. OK, so um, the first page is just some info. Let's have a quick read through that because a lot of people actually miss things here. OK, first one, the assignment consists of four questions. Now, these are not optional which of the four you want to do. You have to do all four. You can't pick which ones. We actually get quite a few people where the printer runs out of ink or something and doesn't print the last questions and then they don't answer it. So make sure that you do answer all four questions. OK, compile your answers neatly. Ideally, like I said, use an Excel spreadsheet and um, then remember to convert to PDF before you upload. OK, the assignment consists of 100 marks. So on the 100 marks, you need 50% to pass. OK, now this next one is very important. In order to obtain a mark for a transaction leg. So this is now when it comes to any type of T account. The debit and credit entry, well, the transaction leg, so either the debit or the credit entry, all the following should be in place. So it means for you to get one mark for each leg. So the debit leg will be one mark, the credit leg will be one mark. If there's VAT applicable, then the VAT item will also be worth one mark. So to get that one point, you need to count for the entry under the correct name. The entry must be correctly allocated to the debit or credit side. So if you switch your debit or credits around, then you won't get any marks. And the contra account indicated has to be correct. So remember what I said in the training example that we did? You have to write in your description the name of the account where you are posting the entry to. So you can add a description or whatever. That's, there's absolutely no marks for that. The only marks will be to correctly write the name of the account that you are posting the transaction to. So in the account where you're posting it to, you're going to write bank or whatever it is. In your bank, you're going to write fees. So that way around. And then obviously the random amount must be correct. So if any of these are wrong, no mark will be awarded. So if you don't do all those four things perfectly, then no marks will be awarded. Uh, awarded. OK, we specifically indicated VAT is applicable. A VAT rate of 15% should be used. OK, now I'm going to spell it out for you. Question one doesn't have VAT. Question two is the only one where VAT is actually applicable. Question three doesn't have VAT. Four doesn't have VAT. So VAT only applicable to question two. OK, and then if you've got cents, round off to the nearest rand. So don't put any cents in your assignment. OK, now let's go through to question one. In question one, I'm going to start with the required. So it says you are required to draw up the trust ledger accounts for the clients. So that means you only have to do the client accounts. So again, I'm going to spell it out for you. You're going to have five accounts. Mr. Ray Williams, Mr. Earl Anthony, Mrs. Laurie Nichols, Mr. Norm Duke, and then a section 86 for investment account. OK, those are the five accounts where marks will be awarded for. Now, if I was you, my little exam tip would be they don't require a trust cash book for this and no marks will be awarded for the trust cash book. But if I was you, I would go and write up all of the applicable transactions in the trust cash book and from the trust cash book go and post them 
to the various clients accounts. Okay, I'm going to spell it out again. Only marks will be awarded for the client's accounts, but I think it's going to be 10 times easier to draft the client accounts if you do a cash book, which will not be awarded any marks, but then post from your cash book to the various client's accounts. Okay, so that's my little hint if you guys want to use it. So let's go back to the top. It says the following transactions are in the trust cash book for July 2021. So we are doing the month of July 2021. Okay, you are representing Mr. Ray Williams in a divorce case. Mr. Ray Williams deposits 50,000 Rand in your trust account on the 10th of July. So there you have your first cash book transaction. The following expenses are incurred on behalf of Mr. Ray Williams. Okay, now advocate's fee 21 July 10,500. Assume that advocate's fee gets physically paid on that day. So that is actually a cash book transaction on that day. Then if we move along, fee for drawing a contract, 26 July, 6,000 Rand. Now just hold on on that. Let's read below that. It said you agreed with Mr. Ray Williams that you would make the following transfers to your business account. 50% immediately and 50% when you finalize the settlement agreement. So that won't be a cash book transaction on that exact day. It will be split up with 3,000 Rand on that day and the other 3,000 Rand on the day when you finalize the settlement agreement. So that gets split up into two separate transactions. Then on the 30th of July, the matter was finalized and you raise the invoice as follows. Invoice on the 30th of July for 25,000 Rand. Now there again, assume that you transfer those funds from trust to business on the same day. So in this case, that's a cash flow transaction. That one gets split up into two, and that one's a cash flow transaction on the days we, as mentioned in the assignment. Then invoice for representing Mr. Ray Williams in the divorce settlement discussion and court attendance. Okay, so that's just telling us the detail of that invoice. Then it says reconcile the trust account transfer the funds to your business account, including the balance of the 50% for drawing up the contract. So we've already said we're going to take half there, and half on the 30th when it concludes, and refund the outstanding amount to Mr. Williams. So after you've paid the 10, the 3, 3, and the 25, there's going to be a balance left in the trust. Do a cash book payment to reflect that you pay that money back to Mr. Williams and that his account is zero at the end of the day. Right, let's move on to number two. Mr. Earl Anthony deposited 50,000 Rand in May 2021. Now, May is very important because that is we do in July. So that means the 50,000 Rand, if there's no other transactions before July, is a opening balance in the ledger of Mr. Earl. It's not a transaction in this month, okay? For legal action against Mrs. Lisa Wagner, Ms. Wagner settled out of court and refunded Mr. Earl Anthony. Now let's just park there. Um, it's telling us that she paid Mr. Earl Anthony 15,000 Rand for the fees. So that will come into my trust. Mrs. Wagner also paid another 15,000 Rand for damages there. And she paid another seven and a half to cover his legal costs. And then it says the 37,500 was received on the 23rd of July. Okay. Do not show that as a single transaction. Show that as three separate transactions on the 23rd of July. The 15, the 15, and the seven and a half. Okay. Then it says your fee amounts to 18,000 Rand. So that's the amount that we're going to transfer to business. And we do that on the 30th of July. So there it gives us the date where we do the trust to business transfer. Reconcile the trust account and pay out the balance to Mr. Or Anthony. So again, after, so there's monies that come in, you take your fee, 
whatever is left, pay that to Mr. Earl Anthony on the 30th of July. Okay, then we get to number three. Miss Laurie Nichols sold her house to Mr. Norm Duke for 6.5 million. That's only info at this point. Mr. Norm Duke secures a home loan of 6 million rand to finance the house. Now at this point, link that 6 million rand to this line there, where it says the bank paid the guaranteed amount into the trust account. That guarantee amount is the 6 million rand that he secured there. So I link those two together. Okay, then it says Ms. Laurie Nichols deposited 25,000 Rand into your account on the 30th of June. So that's relatively simple. That's a cash book transaction. Ms. Norm Duke delivers a check to your offices for 750,000 on the 4th of July. So remember, we've got to account for that as a receipt on the 4th of July. You deposit the trust the check into your trust on the 5th of July, so that's irrelevant because we captured it on the 4th. The 750 is to cover transfer fees, municipal costs, levy and your fee. Okay, Mr. Norm Duke requests that you invest the funds paid to your trust account in an investment account once the check is cleared. Okay, so this is very important because before this check clears, your check gets audited by the bank. So at no point do you actually invest the 750,000 Rand, okay? Because it never clears. So 750 comes in, the moment the check goes audited, you reverse the transaction. Mr. Norm Duke then transfers 500 Rand to your account by EFT on the 20th of July, 500,000. Okay, that's a normal cash book. And we invest 201,500 and we leave the balance in trust. So the only amount that we're going to invest is the 201,500, not the 750. Then at a stage, we're going to transfer the funds from the investment account to your trust account on the 29th of July. So we withdraw the investment and then we earned interest to the amount of 6,700 and remember to split that interest in 5% to the LPC, 95% to the client. Okay, then the property is registered on the 30th of July. So there, make a note that we now have to transfer the purchase price from Mr. Duke's account to Mrs. Nichols' account. Okay, so after the guarantee, so you'll see the guarantee pays out there to the value of six and a half million. Now there will be enough credits in the ledger account of Mr. Well, there's actually not enough credits, but regardless, we have to transfer the balance of the purchase account from Mr. Duke to Ms. Nichols. So six and a half million rand credit Mr. Mrs. Nichols. Okay, now you'll see after you pass that journal where you take where you debit his account with six and a half million, he's going to have a shortfall. He doesn't have enough funds in trust. And at that point, Mr. Duke will pay in the shortfall. So he, his debits are going to be larger than his credits. So whatever the debits are over and above the credits, that amount you need to pay in so that Mr. Duke's account goes down to zero. Okay, then it says you pay accounts on behalf of Mr. Norm Duke. Now, obviously, you first going to have to pay out all of these amounts and the fees before you can actually see what the shortfall is. So they should have actually taken this line and added that as the very last one because we can't at this point where they say paying the shortfall determine what the shortfall is because we first have to go and pay transfer duty, levies, municipal and our fee for doing the transaction. So after you've accounted for all of those transactions, then calculate the shortfall and have Mr. Duke paying the shortfall. And then we pay the following on behalf of Ms. Laurie Nichols. So she just pays a pro rata municipal and levies. Reconcile accounts for Ms. Nichols and Mr. Duke. So at this point, you will see that 
Miss Nichols now has all the funds in her trust account. So when the question states to reconcile, it means go and pay her out. So after you've paid out Miss Nichols, and after Mr. Duke has paid his amount in, both of the accounts must be on zero. Okay, hopefully that clarifies. This is a bit of a complex one, but yeah, just keep track of all, get all your cash flows in. Remember to first pay out all of these amounts and then calculate the shortfall for Duke. Remember your journal where you move the six and a half million from Duke to the credit of Miss Nichols. Okay, that is my notes on question one. Let's move to question two. Let's first go and read the required. You are required to repair all the relevant accounting entries to the statement above to the following records of Stormers attorneys for April 2021. And then they give all the ledgers there. Now again, I'm going to make your life easy. I'm going to tell you exactly which T accounts you must do. So when they say ledgers, they mean T accounts. Same with the previous question. Question one is also T accounts. Okay, so we need a business cash book, a trust cash book, correspondent bulls trust creditor, correspondent bulls business data. Okay, so that's correspondent bulls trust creditor is one T account. Correspondent Bulls Business Data is another T account. Then we've got a T account for professional fees, a T account for collection commission, and we've got our VAT control account. So all together you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven T accounts in question two. Right, so now let's quickly read through the actual question. So you own Stormers attorneys. We work from Cape Town. And we receive instruction from your correspondent Bulls attorneys who operates from Pretoria to see a collection matter. You are instructed to recover debt of 1 million Rand. Okay, now that is just info. That's not to say that is what we are actually going to recover. From Mr. Detoy on behalf of your correspondence client, Mr. Nyakani. Right, so you draft the following statement to Bulls attorneys on the 23rd of April. Okay, now in this case, where there's transactions that don't have specific dates with them or next to them, except that that transaction happened on the 23rd of April. So if the question doesn't give a specific date, then assume it happened on the 23rd of April. So first we've got to go and work out these question marks. Now I can't actually give you the answers, but I'm going to tell you pretty much how to calculate it. So that question mark there, our correspondence allowance, we read down here, it says Bulls attorneys are granted 15% correspondent allowance on all income earned. Now remember, these amounts are already including VAT. So to calculate that amount there, you cal you take the 61,560 plus the 68,400 and you times that by 15% and you write the amount in there. So that is my correspondence allowance on both transactions. Okay. Now, you can go and work out these two amounts must be the same. So you're going to be short an amount there to make these two balance. So take the 950 plus that question mark, write that amount in there. Take the same amount in, that you've got there, write it in here. From here, deduct the 61,000 and the 68,000. That will give you the answer to see what amount was transferred out. Okay. So let's just read on in the questions. Both firms are VAT vendors. Stormer's attorney paid the VAT liability for April on the 30th of April. Don't forget that. That's a bonus point. It's a simple payment from the business account to the VAT control account. Balance per the business bank reconciliation statement for Stormer's attorneys was 23,000 as at the 31st of March. No reconciling items. So what are they telling us there? They are giving us our opening balance for our business bank account. Okay, so all of the transactions for this whole exercise will come from these transactions here. So let's just have a look at them. So it's going to be that monies will come into your trust. So that will be trust transaction and credit the trust creditor. Okay, then 
both of those, one will go to professional fees, one will go to fees, and your other leg will be the business data, and your VAT control account will also be applicable. So you're going to have to work out the VAT outputs on that. And then for all of the amounts that you raise, there's fees. Remember to take the transaction as you've accounted for it and throw it in reverse to the value of 15% to reflect your correspondence allowance. So that's exactly the same as we did in the training exercise. You take the fee and you throw it in reverse in the training exercise was 30% for purposes of this assignment. We'll keep it at, we'll do it at 15%. And then that's again going to be a cash book transaction after you've taken all of your fees, less the allowance, whatever's left in the trust, you need to repay to your clients. So this one is not too difficult. Okay, let's move on to question three. So let's first go to the required. It says you are required to draw up an income statement, profit loss budget. So it's an income statement budget and a cash flow forecast for December 2021 in column format. Let's list each income and expense item separately. So on that, they so basically they want a budget and a cash flow in the format that we did the training example, and they say it's for the year ended. So in this, for purposes of answering this, you need 12 columns. There's going to, you've got to do from January to December. Okay, so let's have a read through the expenses. So we've got an annual bonus for staff of 60,000 Rand. Now, like in the example, we're going to break that down on the budget and divide it by 12 and show it each month. And we don't yet know what's happening on the cash flow side. We don't know when we're paying that bonus. So we'll have to wait before we can do the cash flow. OK, now these monthly expenses, there it says monthly. So it means every month you're going to have each of these items as an expense. And if there's no further in info to say that the cash flow differs from this, your cash flow will look exactly the same as your budget for all of these items highlighted here. Also, there's, as far as I can remember, there's no, they don't say anything about tax, so we don't have to worry, worry about PAYE on the salaries. That was only to show you guys in the training example. So your salaries and your cash, your, in, your expense and your cash flow look exactly the same. And then depreciation 2021, this amount is also monthly. They don't clearly say that there. So every month in your budget, you will reflect that depreciation. Okay, let's see the further info that they give. So due to the effects of COVID-19, the entity chose to move to smaller premises. A contract was signed for new office premises from 1 August. So the rent that you see there, will be applicable from January to July. Then in August, a new rent of 25,000 Rand will become applicable. Okay. And then it also says a deposit is payable. So remember deposits should reflect in your cash flow statement. And so that's the deposit payable. But then they also say you are expecting to receive 15,000 deposit back on the 15th of September for the previous premises you rented. So both of the deposits will only be applicable to your cash flow, the rent to the budget. Okay, bonuses are provided for monthly, yes, and payable in December. So now it tells us the cash flow for that line item. Okay, and then it gets to invoicing. So we invoice 100,000 Rand on a monthly basis in 2020. You are planning to increase the monthly invoicing with 5% from March 2021. So it means we're going to start our fees on 100. From March, we're going to increase it by 5%. And then from August, we're going to increase it with another 5% on the already increased amount from March. So it's not 10% on the 100. It's an extra 5% on the amount after the March increase. 
Okay, and then debt is by an average 75% of the invoices during the month of invoicing. So again, different than our training example, in the month where you write the fee, 75% of the cash flow will come in on the same month and 25% in the next month. Okay, then your bank balance on the 31st of December 2020 is 20,000 Rand. So there they give us the opening balance for my cash flow forecast. So in the uh, little training example we did, there was no opening balance because it was a new firm. In this case, we will have an opening balance. Okay, and then to get a point right, you need to have all the amounts, the 12 amounts applicable to each item correct. But this exercise, I think, is very, very, very easy. This is a very easy 20 marks that you can obtain here. Okay, then in the assignment, they put this column, which I don't really quite understand what they are trying to prove there. The format that we wanted in and the format on the mark plan is exactly the same format that I had in the training lecture. So there's a budget, it's got income and expenses. We had four months, you will have 12 months. The cash flow looks exactly the same as the one we did in the training example. So please don't let this throw you off that the format's any different. Stick to the format in the training example that we did in the lecture on budget and cash flows. Okay, then we move to question four. Let's first go to the required. You are required to record all of the transactions in the cash book. Perform a bank reconciliation for 30 November 2021 and show the income and fee ledger accounts with the applicable transactions. So they're asking for three things. One, you need to do a cash book, a normal cash book. Two, we've got to do a bank recon. And three, they're asking only for the fee income ledger account. So there's three things that you are required to do. Okay, right, so let's have a read through. So firstly, they say this is our bank reconciliation for 30 October. Okay, so this is last month's bank recon. So why do they give us this info? Firstly, there, the 163,000 is the opening balance of my cash book for this month. Last month's closing balance is this month's opening balance. Okay, then these transactions here were my reconciling items for the previous month. So what we've got to do with them is somewhere in the question, we've got to find info which tells me which of these items have passed through the bank statement. So which of them have now appeared on the bank statement? The moment you read something and it says this one has appeared on the bank statement, you cross a line through it. It's dead, we're never gonna use it again, okay? At the end, certain of these will be crossed off, certain of them won't be crossed off. If they are not crossed off, it means we must carry them over exactly the same into the next month's bank recon. Okay, and then also note, they start with a bank statement and end with a cash book balance, which is different than the way we did it in the training example. That's why they add outstanding deposits and less outstanding checks. So if you use their format, that's fine. If you want to swap it around in the way that we did in the training example, then your plus and your minus there will switch around. Okay, but basically, this is just given so that we can get the cash book balance and so that we can see which items must be carried over into next month's bank record. Okay, then it says the following transactions were processed during November. Now, that's maybe not the best wording because these are now the transactions that we have to go and process in our cash book. So, for each of them, bank charges, we have to go and write a credit entry into my cash book for bank charges. So, it's not that these were already processed they somewhere in the history. These ones we now have to go and put in our cash book. So, cash book, cash book, cash book, okay? Now, these checks, we don't know whether they've cleared or not, but these are the checks that we've written out to clients, so we need to go and account 
for all of these checks. So all of these transactions from there to there written into the cash book as payments. Okay. Oh, that's interest received. So that will probably be a receipt. Okay. Then EFT payments. So all these payments, 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 they all just reflect as normal cash book transactions. And here's the deposit. So these are the monies that was physically, well, these are the deposits that we receive. We don't know whether they've passed through the bank at this point. Okay. Then we get to invoices issued. So this is basically the answer to the part where they say the fee ledger account. So your fee ledger account will simply contain two entries, one for that one, one for Ms. Lyant, one for Mr. Mtetwa, Ms. Mtetwa. Okay, so those entries relate only to your fee ledger. Okay, now they get to the point where they say these transactions were processed in the bank statement checks. So now you can go and scratch out all the checks that you see there and scratch out all the deposits that you see here. Whichever checks you have in your cash book that is not ticked off will have to appear on your bank recon. Whichever receipts you have now not ticked off after you see them on the bank statement here. Those ones must carry over onto your bank recon. And then finally, they tell us our bank statement balance for November is that amount. Okay, so there's already another bonus mark there. Okay, so according to me, this is, it, it looks very tricky because the bank recon is the hairy part of this. But the bank recon is actually, I think, five marks of the 20 marks. The bulk of your marks will be allocated for your cash book and your cash book will simply contain all of these entries as simple as we did them in the assignment. That's where the bulk of the marks are and that's the very easy part. So if you mess up or have transactions or miss them in the bank recon, that's not the end of the world. The main part is make sure you get your cash book to reflect all of these transactions, payments on the credit side, receipts on the debit side. Okay, so that's that for the assignment. Um, I don't think the assignment is too difficult. I think if you work through the lectures and understand, maybe watch it once or two or three times even, um, we've covered everything that's in the assignment. The rules should be there. It should all be applicable. Um, so it's literally just to find the way that we did it in the training example and do it, apply the theory and capture it exactly the same way, but under different names, different amounts and different percentages in the new assignment or in the assignment itself. But yeah, definitely not rocket science. I think you can all do very well. And um, yeah, at this point, we normally say, I hope that I don't have to see you guys again, because that means you would have passed it and uh, you're done with this course. So all of the best. I hope you guys make a success of the assignment and of starting your own businesses.